Hello again there friends and fans, Raptor here, and welcome to a brand new fresh take on Grand Strategy Games. This one known as Slipways, a game where not only do you colonize planets, but entire solar systems, which is pretty, pretty cool. It's actually a light take on Grand Strategy Games such as Solaris and also, well, maybe a little Hearts of Iron in there. So if you'd like yourself some Grand Strategy Games and maybe some Civilization Games, then this is definitely the one for you. As it says on their Steam page, weave isolated planets into a vast trade empire, hatch plans, research game-breaking technologies, game-breaking technology, what? And still be done in time for lunch. Oh, I like that. Enjoy the endless possibilities of a space grand strategy game in 60 minutes flat. There's a lot of great things in this game too, by the way, to help you out if you're getting into these games for the first time or don't have a lot of time. This really is great to uh, allow you to experience everything these games have to offer with a lot of simple... Uh, simplification and a lot of helping as well. So the de developers are obviously aware that there's quite a few things to learn in a short amount of time. So they've done a good job of making a video tutorial that you can access at the menu and also while in the middle of the game. There's also a helpful thing when you try to start a new game. If you go on a standard run, the game will also try to attempt to hold your hand by you know, basically saying, hey, this is your first time. Do you want a little extra help? Now, unfortunately for me, I accidentally clicked no, trying to just see what the game was about. Uh, so you can't come back to that. So hopefully there's a way in the future to do that so you can get caught up. There's a campaign for the game and an endless mode and also a ranked run, too, so you can compete against other people if that interests you. And there's a lot of great music and art and also a lot of great just like just good UI and stuff like great little things that make all the difference for these types of games. So the game is available now on Steam if you'd like to pick it up. And thanks again, guys, for subscribing here, smashing like, and of course, becoming members of the channel. Make sure you hop on the Discord, too, if we ever get additional keys for games. That's where they go in our general chat for anyone who's a member of our Discord and anybody who's uh, a subscriber. So make sure you hop on, and let's go ahead and get started with our first playthrough of Slipways. Just a little taste of what it has to offer. Standard run, just you, undeveloped space, and 25 years to make it into a thriving society. Okay, sounds good. Uh, I guess we'll do forgiving uh, for those who want to just enjoy building without too much challenge. Yeah, that's good for a first run. And uh, standard sector, and we'll just roll the dice a little bit, I think. Just pick something different. There we go. And we'll keep it uh, a little easier. Let's go for something a little greener, maybe. Yeah, that looks nice. Cool. All right, let's accept the sector. And now we get th ooh, three races and two perks. So there's different types of, uh, yeah, different types of races with different types of perks between them. Very interesting. You can read about those down below, but basically they're focused on wealth, trade, and efficiency. Let's go with those guys. Let's go with the mining en energy and expendency. Expendency? And also, let's do productivity. There we go. Cool. All right, those three should be pretty cool, but you can do whatever you want between the three. And we can also pick perks too, so let's do uh, well-prepared, and let's do uh, what sounds good. Um... Uh, Reduces structure build time by one month. There we go. And let's begin. Ooh, pretty. So what we selected is not necessarily what a planet looks like that we start on, but the galaxy behind it. That's pretty cool. Okay. Well, let's go ahead and try to click on some things and see what magic we can make happen. A medium signal. Strong signal. Strong signal. And a strong signal, too. All right, let's go ahead and try to launch a... There we go. Probe over there. Oh, an ice ball planet. Wheeler 2. No actions available from that one. So I guess we're exploring the planet here to find out what they've got. <laughs> well, look at that. We have ourselves a bunch of water on this planet. That's helpful. Okay, we can go ahead and export the water if we want to. And st set up a colony as well. Let's go ahead and just click on some things at random. For the first time, uh, I think so some things will pop up to help you in the corner. But again, we're just going to try to go through it as much as we can. It seems like the map will expand immensely once we've explored a little bit more. So we'll go ahead and set that up there, and nothing we can do on that planet. Basically, just a, a, a giant ice ball, as they say. Ah, something similar to Earth here. A colony that we can set up to grow food, it looks like. Water equals food, maybe? If brought to that planet? Water, unmet basic need. Food, unmet basic need. Okay, so we can ship water over there. So, worth one. It's a struggling colony, because we don't have some of the things that they need. But we'll continue to uh, monitor the situation and improve our little... Colony. Bleak. Let's see here. Bacteria breeding, water extraction, monoculture farm. Hmm. Let's do food. All right. Council tasks. Throughout the game, 
The council will come with you with addition come to you with additional tasks to perform. When that happens, click the notification and pick two of the three tasks available. Once you're done with the whole batch, a new selection will show up. For your first game, don't worry about them too much. Just pick the ones that seem fun to do. <gasps> what? That's not gaming. Gaming's supposed to be serious at all times. All right, new tasks available. Let's see what we got here. New council tasks. Establish one important hub. Discover eight planets. Increase total production of something by three units. Hmm, let's see. Kind of like the idea of just discovering the planets. I want to see what they all look like. I'm actually curious to know how that looks. Ah, we knew you had it in you. And also... Uh, an import hub as well. What's good for trade is good for all of us. Except tasks. Cool. Alright, so we have to find eight more planets. So we've already found what seems to be maybe four or five. Although we don't have a probe here. But this is a mineral planet, so that's cool. Let's see what's going on over here. Ooh, what is that? That's no moon. That's a forge world. A nanotech factory. Ooh, interesting. What? It's really cool. Happiness, science, wealth to keep track of. This is definitely the type of game that I'd really want to experience more. Oh, look at that. Another Forge World. Hmm. Another colony here. Let's see. What else can we build? I want to be able to export more things. Looks like we're doing bacteria farms here. Or biomass into food. Interesting. We should be able to generate water here too, but if we import... Or in food, that's what they want. So there should be a mine here. Let's build a mine on that planet. It's Lago 5. <laughs> Man, those planets look really cool. Really makes me think of a little bit of like Elite Dangerous, Star Citizen. More maybe No Man's Sky. Let's go ahead and bounce to there. Hmm. Let's do another farm. And the map expands even more. Well, we got to work on getting that happiness up. More food and more things for our people will increase their happiness. Ooh, an asteroid. Cool. Can be exploited for wealth. Yield six credits for each nearby colonized planet. Oh. Well, then we're already getting 12. So that's good. So we almost have plus... Uh, let's see. Let's do a scavenger world. That sounds cool. We can actually get scrap. Neat. Although we're in the negative now. But maybe it takes a little time to colonize. All right, let's try to find some more planets in accordance with our one of our tasks here. Forebear Ruins. Connect with the planet to explore. Ooh. Let's see. Oh, this is our distance. That's as far as we can go. Interesting. Simac 4. A remnant planet. Wow. I like the idea of continuously uh, mining ore out of some of these planets. Oh, would you look at that? Ah, there we go. Takes a little while, but we can finally get it. So that gives us like a boost, not a constant income. That's neat. Try this over here. Weak signal. Another asteroid. Can't exploit, though, for any money. Task complete. Excellent. Looks like they're happy with us. Now they want us to build a uh, trade port, so that could be a port at any planet. Seems like this planet seems to be maybe the best one to build on so far. Hmm. Has unfulfilled needs. Yeah, so we're going to have to start fulfilling as many as we can. The exploration is done for now. That was an easy one. Ooh, this is cool. Oh, a lava planet, so it's a rel relatively new planet, maybe. Another asteroid. Let's go ahead and try a thawing facility here. Or an arctic farm. Hmm. Low happiness. The happiness in your sector is getting pretty low. Be careful. If it hits 50, you can be thrown out of office. The easiest way to fix this is keep a close eye on the struggling planets. They're the biggest drain on your happiness, so try to avoid having too many. When colonizing a new planet, try to scout ahead and have a plan on how to get it established. Uh, of course, so there's many things for us to learn. So I would assume then a uh, t good debrief of the tutorial and also, of course, playing a few times would really help you out in figuring out what you need to do and uh, how to take advantage of certain planets. A lot of RNG here, too. 
All planets could be great in order to bring in a lot of materials, and other planets could be just basically stinker planets like these, uh, this ice ball planet over here, which doesn't seem to give us anything. Water planet's valuable, though. Okay, we have our Arctic farm planet. We could do a Gaia world planet here. Not allowed now. We can connect some of these planets now. Or at some point we can. Hmm. That'll be the way to connect them for trade. Interesting. Empire size. Your empire size just increased for the first time. Growth is a good thing, but a large empire also has its drawbacks. Mounting administration costs with each level empire size, and the total administration cost per planet will rise. You, also, you can always check the current empire size on the status bar. Status bar. Well, our size is growing. Ah, right, here's our status here. Oh, look at how simplified a lot of this stuff is. That's fantastic. There's our sector, uh, domains, score so far. So a little bit like Dwarf Romantic in terms of your moves. Some technology that we can unlock, although we haven't generated any science yet, but something soon. And a laboratory, which takes a little bit of time to construct. So we can do a lab somewhere out here for a little bit of that science. Build it by the uh, thingy there. All right, we'll need people to go in there to unlock science. So we'll need some colonists to fly out. Good planet here if we can provide it with what it needs. Let's see. First, iron in exchange for... Oh, look at that. Iron in exchange for people. And you also want food. There we go. Now we're generating people. And we can ship them back to another planet, maybe. Oh, it's obstructed. Hmm... Well, we can send the people to the science bay. So now we're starting to connect things. So first we build the infrastructure, and then we start building all the things that they need to uh, start producing. So over here we're creating food. So food for people there. And looks like that might be goods of some sort. Yeah, goods. Unmet extra need. Okay. There's a generation for scrap around here somewhere too. I want to find another planet to go and explore. Another planet here that we can trade... Food and uh, green stuff for people. Colony it is. And of course some of these planets here that we can also populate for iron ore. Although we'll have to figure out another planet nearby for that. Well, looks like we're connected to this planet. We need to get some people going on that one. Electronics and wheat for this one. And we're going to need to get another wheat planet going. Scrap for a wetland farm. Let's try people for growing some of this uh, biomolecule stuff. Take advantage of that. So everything seems to just come down to creating uh, multiple moves. Kind of like a chess move. You need to first see the board in front of you. And then you need to start making moves to unlock things. And make the moves that will best benefit the Empire. Pretty cool. We're going to really plummet with happiness, but I don't think it's bad for a first try. I'm starting to understand what's here, what matters most, and pretty cool, actually, to see that you can connect this way, and everything's kind of like, um, it's kind of like um, the box game, where you have to box each other out, that type of thing. You might not know what I mean, but basically, we're just drawing connections between things, and well, it feels a little bit like Snake. We're trying to constantly find a way out, like the Snake game. It feels like, anyway. All right, let's provide water there. We'll trade people for water. Can we trade again? Wait, that's not providing food there. Well, we can produce that green stuff. Hmm. Wrap for food. I assume the signal also tells you about the planet size or what to expect. When you're going to colonize a planet, that's pretty cool. That's pretty helpful. So people for iron ore. Nothing here that we really need. People for iron ore again. A lot of iron ore over here. A lot of options for iron ore. Iron ore for scrap or goods. 
I should do a scrap, scraptastic factory over here. And we can't afford something this long, unfortunately. But that'll probably be us bankrupt right there. Still pretty good for a first look, I'd say. And there we are. After seven years, our economy has faltered. You've been forced out of office. There really wasn't anything here to begin with. So, oh, you can actually undo your last move, but that's not going to make any difference. Kind of cool, though, that you can replay it one last time, but I would assume that it's a series of moves that will doom you and not just one move. Let's try and pick a new spot there using the lessons learned. We'll accept the sector. We'll pick the same people again and the same perks. Actually, that's a little different there. There we go. Close to the same. The same races with some somewhat similar perks. Okay, let's go. Try this again. Let's make improvements. Gamer progression. Let's go. Find out what's around us. We have a planet here that exports iron ore. Let's see. Looks like we have a connection here and here to create uh, wheat. Great. Then we can trade the wheat for more people. Ah, oh, we have water here. Perfect. We can do water and wheat so we can connect these two together. Excellent. And then we can transfer them back. So we have a full circle now, and that should generate money between trade. Awesome. Fantastic. New tasks available. Increase the total production of goods by two units. Explore the designated area. Increase the total production of electronics by three. Let's do that one, and let's do good. Sound fun as well. Uh, except. Very good. Okay, well, now we're doing much better. Now that we got a grip on things. So let's see. The other planets require... So we have our water exporter planet, so this one's really exporting a good amount of water. This planet will create more people. Oh, another stinker planet there. Okay, we've got ourselves some copper there and also here, right? No. Uh, some of them are duds. Oh, looks like we're boxed into a corner over here. Yep, looks like a lot of these planets don't actually exist. Okay, so we can trade people for both water and uh, the green that green stuff. Hmm. So both of these can actually produce that stuff. So let's go with... Uh, let's transport... Um, oh, actually, that's, that's the wrong one, but I think we can actually change that. If we do... Let's get some credits back. See if we can find a signal over here. Ooh, this might work out. We can actually use some of the iron that's nearby. Might be able to create trade routes between those two. So let's see if we can transport people uh, to... Ooh, what is this? Oh, yes. A lot of these planets want scrap. Hmm. Well, we could give people for... Ah, uh, that's scrap for wheat. These planets are just too far or not not good enough for us. Okay, let's see. A lot of these really want uh, some things that are a little further away. This is water and wheat. At least that's what I'm calling it in my head. So people for iron. What planet really wants iron? Could use that to make goods, though, eventually. Let's try to do, use a strong signal down here. This game, I can tell, is addictive. Uh, I can tell that this is one that I'm probably going to want to play a few times, mostly because of the RNG. You can be a complete noob and have a fantastic empire and do it accidentally, and then have a ton of experience, and then just be kind of stuck out in the cold, and it all depends on just, like, what planets you happen to stumble upon. Here we can trade iron for some of the goods there, so that's what they want. Uh, 
Let's see what we can do about that. People for iron. That's going to be too far, I think, isn't it? Not colonized. So let's go ahead and create goods with iron. So you guys go ahead and trade there. Task complete. Excellent. So we're completing uh, all the tasks for these people. Anything that that wa planet wants in return, it seems not yet anyway. Okay, any goods that we need? Looks like um, Slythe 8, is that? Should be able to trade that back this way. Does that create a train network there? Out of range, but it should go directly through that planet. I'm thinking of this as like a, a hub that should be able to transport that stuff there. Oh, they want electronics as well. Okay, chips is something else they need in return. Barbecue, barbecue maybe? To make a full good? Nothing there. Nothing. Okay. As you can see, too, each move is like a month because it takes time for them to kind of travel out to the destination to set up the slipway, which is really cool. A lot of these require electronics, but not necessarily make them. Let's see. Well, we could create um, people there. We're, we're typically missing one of the two things we need here. Grab for wheat. Hmm. Probably kind of like we're shut out on the uh, left side over there. For now, anyway. There's an asteroid there. Wow. It's cool, though. Like, every move is not its not so frustrating. You'd think, like, everything is a well-calculated chess move, but some of the times you can just take a risk and just hope for the best. So here we can transfer people to electronics. So now we're making that. If we can deliver water... Now we're creating two electronics, so then if we can feed it back to that planet... Unless we can make that somewhere else... not colonized, so we'll have to colonize that then. We can try to provide them with food. This planet here is creating food. Oh. And we'll try to connect these this way. Oh! Buy a research facility. Make it a tourist attraction or establish a base. Uh, turns people into credits. Okay. Oh, perfect. So we can generate a little extra cash there. Look at that. Money's up. Happiness not doing too bad. I'm, I'm evolving as a player. Play on, play up. Okay, let's go ahead and establish people for water. Or wheat. Bacteria breeding, let's do that. I don't think we have much of that going on this side. And then we should be able to connect back here. So hopefully that connects the electronics that they need. I'll have to look into it a little bit more to see exactly how to transfer things this way. I don't know if it's directional or however it works, but... Still interesting, and I like seeing it play out. Let's do uh, a little bit there. So we can't occupy those planets. Iron, we don't need much more of. Scrap for wheat. Really need some wheat over this uh, side of the world. Okay, we have people for... Ooh, no. And another, like, autonomous factory. Hmm. Well, people for water would be fine. We'll colonize that. They're going to be quite unhappy out here, though. I need to do this to find out what's out here. So before I was thinking that we just had to send it to each planet, but really we could set it between them. And that's just fine. Okay, so now we got a lot of water planets over here. Yeah, bring me that money. And people for... Oh, sca a scavenger world, so we want scraps. So we might be able to provide these people with... Uh, some of the wheat. The jungle farm, yeah. Definitely something we want. Connect these two together. Nothing. Scammed. 
All right, these two will generate water. Where can we send that water to? On this planet, we could provide uh, wheat for more people. But where do we send the water to? This is this is just really cool. I, I love the art style, the chill mode of this. The everything's kind of a chess move, but not really intimidating. It's not a time sink. It's not a unforgive. Well, obviously it's set to unforgiving. I guess or forgiving. I guess is what we do want to say. But it's nice. It's pleasant, and I like it. Let's go ahead and connect these two together. Wow, we can create tons of weed up here. That's pretty cool. Happiness is still quite low, but we're working on it. I guess we kind of put ourselves into a corner with that other planet. What we really want to do is start colonies and then give them what they want. That way we can kind of say, hey, all these people's needs are being met. Looks like we can make a thing down here. These guys also want that green, that green stuff. We can generate water here for more scrap. More people and more food. Let's see what happens. Uh, let's connect this for water. Excellent. Now we can trade with the other planets if they need water. Which they just might. Ooh, what is this? There's like a little symbol on the top of it. Successful! Oh, excellent. We're, we're, oh, we got some science going on too. Oh, we're getting pretty close to um, 50%. So we need to be careful. Plan is creating a lot of scavenger opportunities. So there's a planet for iron for goods and more scrap. Okay. Oh, we got more more of that green stuff. Nice. I'll send that back. Task complete. Excellent. And now there's new tasks. So good, we're, we're knocking out tasks, we're getting better each time. I think this is a fantastic game to definitely learn and uh, increase the difficulty as you go. Been playing a lot of games like that where I'm starting on like, you know, basic normal difficulty and then after a while I kind of want to restart and jump up the difficulty again, so that's cool. Get two ocean planets to successful. Get two iron producing planets to successful. Increase total production of whatever. Okay, let's go with these two. We'll keep working on these planet improvements. So what do we want these guys to produce? Goods, maybe? Hmm. I don't know if we could create electronics here. Let's do this. Can they go through here like this? I hope so. Oh, it's obstructed by another slipway, it seems. Okay, let's go ahead and connect. Uh, there we go. Hmm. I'll have to see if there's like a way to connect those through, but my idea is to just bypass with the uh, iron ore there and send it that way. Also to get more people here on these planets. We can send uh, wheat and electronics here. As you can see. Oh, that's got to go. There we go. Excellent. So now wheat and electronics. Oh, now we can send goods over there too. We can have a, a planet to create goods. Oh, they're going to be really happy about that. Let's check up here. We need to find a planet to create goods. More iron. Oh, weak signal. Oh, well, we'll find one eventually, I'm sure. But if we provide that, that'll make that uh, place much stronger. It looks like it's working the way I thought. I hope, anyway. There we go. Ah, perfect. We want to create goods here. So we might be able to send some of that stuff up here. I think we'll send more of that iron up this way. Mm, it's out of range, though. So we'll have to colonize this planet. And we'll...
we'll create more. More water here. And we should be able to ship over the goods. As long as we exchange that for iron. <laughs> now let me do it. Okay, let's try over here. Oh, I have to colonize first. Of course. Let's send it up that way. And we can ship water here. And then we should be able to ship goods all the way up there, and then it should come down back here. Maybe it just takes some time each month. But anyway, so we went from like zero to mediocre. Not bad. Slipway seems like a lot of fun. I don't think my playthrough really does the justice of the depths of the gameplay. And of course, like I mentioned, the developer has lots of little tutorials you can check at any time. As well as a little helper mode for the first time that you run through. There's lots of things to upgrade and unlock too that we didn't get to today. But we're just simply out of time for this one. Though, it may be, possibly, time for you to check it out yourself. If you'd like to, at least. Well... You guys are awesome. Thank you very much for supporting. I hope to see you all soon. And thanks again for all the love. You guys are amazing. Make way for Slipways. Available now on Steam. Pretty cool, I'd say. Yeah, I like it. I want to play it more. <laughs>